Hello and welcome to the Big Time Strength Podcast, featuring small school strength coaches making the big time where they're at. This week, our host coach, Preston Peterson, brings to you a high school strength coach who is doing it big time in the high school setting. We really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I hope you enjoy this week's show. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another episode of the Big Time Strength Podcast. This week, I had the opportunity to interview Coach Tony Stewart, head strength and conditioning coach at North Scott High School in Eldridge, Iowa. He has been there for 10 years and has grown the program to one of the best in the nation. In this episode, we talk about Coach Stewart's journey through strength and conditioning, how he gets his students, coaches, and administrators all on board, how he specifically makes the big time where he's at, 1 by 20 training, implementing questionnaires, and much more. If you'd like to contact Coach Stewart, you can find his contact info in the show notes below. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe and share it with other coaches. Hope you enjoy the show. Coach Stewart, thanks for coming on the Big Time Strength Podcast. Let's get things rolling by telling us your journey through strength and conditioning and how you got to be at North Scott High School. Oh, glad, to have, uh, glad to be here. I appreciate you asking me. Um, that, that my journey could probably take up half the half the time we have, but I'll keep it short here. So, um, long story short, I started off um, kind of fell in love with training as a athlete at Iowa State. Um, got into really kind of understand why we did. And one of my my coaches always told me, you know, I remember having a bad day in the weight room, and the coach put this in my head right away. He said, "Look, you don't you don't train you train to throw as a thrower." He's like, "You don't throw to train." Like your days in the weight room are going to be, you know, up and down a little bit, but remember why you do it. So that kind of really got me into the training philosophy and everything. And then from there, I went and taught a couple of years at uh, Winterset High School. Um, long story short, I ran into my old coach who had since moved from Iowa State to Illinois State. Um, he was, we were at a stop sign and she'd wrap as the day after Christmas and hadn't seen him in two years and went and had lunch or breakfast. I don't even remember what it was. And um, he remembered a couple of years prior, he said, it, I had told him if I could do anything else but teach, I'd want to be a strength coach. And he said, if you're serious, you can come work for me. And I told him, give me two years, uh, which actually was about a year and a half to get my full teaching license. I did it. Um, ended up resigning from my job. He kept his promise. Went to Illinois, uh, was a grad assistant, uh, got my master's in physiology, uh, two years there, um, and then looking for jobs, ended up um, looking back in Iowa because my wife and I had our first child when I was a grad, grad assistant, wanted to be close to family, and North Scott advertised their a PE job as PE uh, strength and conditioning, and I applied and was able to get the job, and I've been here for you know, this is starting year 10. So that's a short synopsis of a long story there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You know, going into a decade of, of coaching, um, you know, at, at North Scott's pretty impressive. And uh, during that time, I, I guarantee just the amount of people that you've got to impact. And, and when I visited, just being able to see all the relationships that you build with each one of the student athletes is, is pretty incredible. Um, could you kind of tell us a little bit about your department's mission and what, what you guys are trying to accomplish and, and what you look um, for your athletes, uh, your students to gain through the course of your program? Well, I think um, in our department as a physical education department, um, most of our kids are actually in the weight room. I think it's about 73% when we're doing um, done some research trying to get this uh, new facility we built done. Um, we found it was over 73% of our kids uh, take strength conditioning class for their PE class. And I think our uh, the big reason why is we want we want everybody we want everybody in our school to feel like it's for them. Um, whether you are a high level athlete, uh, Zach Peterson, you know, at Iowa State, or somebody that has never stepped foot on an athletic field at all, uh, we feel from an educational standpoint that um, strength and conditioning or training, lifting weights, staying in physical shape is not just for athletics, um, but obviously it's a huge part of it. Uh, so I think that's kind of our biggest mission from an educational standpoint is that um, it's for everybody. It's not for just the chosen few, if you will. That's great, Coach. Um, along with that, you know, just – just once you start to see the mission um, develop into into your culture, what how could you describe to other coaches, other listeners, um, what your culture is like at North Scott, um, just for your program, but maybe even the school atmosphere? Um, 
first of all, I guess it's not perfect. You know, sometimes you get uh, you can get this view of you know you see stuff on the internet or you see you know you know whatever it is an outside looking in. Um, but everybody, I think, deals with some of the same issues, some of the same problems. Um, as far as you know, our teams. You know, some of our teams have an amazing culture. You know, our um, football team is incredible, um, and that stems from the top down as far as their training atmosphere and their expectations. Um, but that's because it's expected from our head coach. Um, our baseball team, you know, we lost a tough one yesterday at the state tournament. Um, but you know where they were yesterday morning? Is They were on their phones at Team Builder, uh, using their Team Builder app at Ankeny High School, training at 9.30 in the morning um, while they're on the road to the state tournament because that's what they've done all year. Um, and that's just, to me, that's a, that's a cultural thing. Those guys, um, how many other, how many other schools are going to do that? Travel two and a half hours to Des Moines, make sure you find a facility that you can lift in the day of your first state tournament game. Um, so, you know, we have some teams that are like that and then we have some that maybe aren't, 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 and that's just, uh, from uh, my standpoint and my assistant standpoint, it's, building that culture through relationships with the coaches. Um, we can work with the kids and all we want, we have good relationships with kids, but as far as um, building that team culture, it has to come from the top down because um, our head football coach will say, he says this often, he's like a lot of times, you know, kids will take, or anybody will take the path of least resistance um, if it's offered to them. And that starts with the head coach down. Um, as far as the school environment, um, some of the best advice I got from my dad growing up um, as I was going to be a teacher, and he actually got this from his dad who had never taught a day in his life. He said, son, when you go to uh, go to the school and you're working with kids, he said, you need to find the ones on the outside, the kids that are harder to reach, um, and focus on them. He said, if you can get that group working for you, he said, everybody in between is going to be a lot easier. And And he was exactly right. So I just remember – some of the best relationships or some of the best, you know, notes or emails or phone calls you get um, later on in your career after kids have gone or for maybe kids you wouldn't expect. And they're just the kids that, hey, you know, thank you for making me feel welcome. I'm really glad that, you know, I, I have a girl that, oh, man, I have a great relationship with this young lady. And if you would look at her, you would you two would say, well, wait, really? I mean, just she's just, we're completely polar opposite people. Um, but she transferred here or moved here her senior year of high school and told me, I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but she told me that she never enjoyed any type of physical education class until she came here and it had everything to do with how he treated her. And to me, that's a, that's a huge, um, that's a huge benefit. And that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. And I think from a school standpoint, I think that's what we kind of try to do. We want to make sure everybody feels welcome and everybody feels a part of what we're doing and, um, we have great kids in North Scott, and it uh, starts from the top down from our superintendent down. So, what you just said just really pumps me up, Coach. That's uh, that's what it's really all about, man. I I, I truly uh, admire that. Um, one of the things that you talked about at the beginning there is you were talking about how it starts at the top down, and you kind of finished with that also. Um, how did you go about getting coaches and administrators on board so that you were able to eventually? you know, uh, have the opportunity to develop as many relationships as you could with, with the uh, student athletes and, and everybody that you were working with. So I first came, I think the, the biggest thing, I don't know if anybody's done uh, three dimensional coaching at all. Um, it's kind of partnered with FCA and I've gone through it. And one of the things I always talk about is the first dimension of coaching is your X's and O's. And then you can go to the second, third dimension would be, um, you know, the heart of an athlete, the mind, the mind of the athlete, psychology, and and then the the small, the last part would be heart and the faith of the athlete. Um, with that, as a coach coming into a new new building, um, you, the first dimension, X's and O's, like I had to prove that, you know, I knew what I was doing. And just through my experience in education, that was one. And then, you know, how I taught, how I coached, people saw that. You gain a respect based on, how you go about your business. I think that that's the first thing. Um, but then the second thing there is, is don't have an ego. Um, I had to battle that a little bit myself, but I think over time I really got better at, Hey, I were, I, this was from Brooke Kessel, you know, he's a guy at GA for, 
and say, hey, you, you work for however many coaches you have. So as far as how many teams we have, I have, you know, I'd have to check the number. I'm throwing it out there. But I have 18 sports. I have 18 bosses, along with my athletic director, my principal, my superintendent. Um, so I work for those people. So you need to make sure, I need to make sure that when we have those conversations with those people, that I'm not talking down to them, even though you and I know oftentimes from a training standpoint, you know, I'm going to have a little bit more experience, a little bit better information. Um, but from, you know, I don't know how to teach volleyball, you know, so I, we're, we got to work together and I have to listen to what they have to say and not come in guns blazing. And sometimes uh, you give a little to gain a lot. And I think that's huge when building relationships because it can't just be all about what you want and what you think is, is best. It's a co- cooperative and collaborative kind of a uh, situation. So that that's the kind of the biggest advice I'll give young coaches going into new jobs. That's great, Coach. I love that type of viewpoint. One of the things that is kind of the namesake of this of this podcast is is just like that big time atmosphere or or just doing a lot with a little. And and I want you to kind of give me a unique way you're making the big time where you're at. Oh man, I think our kids. Um, it's expectation. You know, I, Coach Kelly is our wrestling coach. You know, we, we come in and when we train and we talk to kids, it's, I will never say, oh, mate, you're just a high school kid or we'll let this go because you're in high school. And I, I said that from day one. I, like, I don't care if it's my nine-year-old, you know, coaching his baseball team or whatever I do with him or high school kids. Like, there's going to be a certain level of expectation that's obviously aligned with with their you know age level and their ability level. Um but those expectations don't waver. And just because you are not in, you know, at Alabama playing football doesn't mean that you can't do the best you can at every situation. And I think that's what's, what's huge for us is we, another quote, you know, we talked about quotes we use is, um, you talk, you, excuse me, what you tolerate, you encourage. So the more you tolerate things, the more you encourage kids to take that path of least resistance. And I think for me, making the big time where you're at, um, you probably read Frosty, that's where you get the, get the quote there, but making the big time where you're at is just about, you know, are you going to do things the right way? You know, we go to these conferences. I just got back from Virginia at the Central Virginia Sports Performance Seminar. If you ever get a chance to go, you know, I sat and talked to coaches from Penn State um, to Illinois Springfield to a high school in Oklahoma. I mean, everybody in between, and not one of them cared about the logo on your chest. Everyone just cared about what what we were going to do for our kids at whatever level. And it's amazing to, you know, I talked to some with Coach of Penn State, you know, that's not perfect there either. I mean, they deal with some of the same stuff we deal with um, at the high school level. So if you look at making the big time because of a logo, um, then you're uh, you're going to have a, you're going to have a hard career. You're going to be disappointed more than you are satisfied, in my opinion. That is one of the things that I continue to take away from conversations that I have with you is, is just attacking your, your, your job, your purpose, your life in that way. And, and uh, it's, it's pretty impressive just to see, um, you know, the connections that you make with people because you're, you're fighting for that, that high level of, of success or high expectations. Um, and, and that's something that it just encourages me. Uh, one of the things that, that I also saw within your program is it's just, how much you build up team camaraderie and, and develop leaders. What are, what are some of the ways or techniques or, or just any, anything in general that you use um, to develop leaders and, and to get that team atmosphere? Um, one, one thing we've done in the last few years is we've tried to get um, teams in season to train with teams. Um, so we have, and it's not always ideal, um, but we have a six block um, six block help center that's done at you know 245 and ends at 315 at the end of every day um so what my administration has allowed me to do is okay so this fall if football wants to train together um the varsity football team will come in on you know say monday before practice and they'll lift from it ends up being about 250 250 255 and then we'll go to about 245 until they head out to practice well the whole team's there you train together you build that um, build that bond. This summer was really the first time 
consistently had baseball. I had mentioned them earlier. They came on mon- Mondays and Thursdays, which were the conference game days, um, at 9.30 in the morning. Every like Their freshman, sophomore, and varsity teams all came together. And when they, uh, you know, call five or state tournament, you know, Texas kids, just congratulations, all the stuff. And, and one of our seniors said, you know, I can't thank you enough for, you know, what you've done with baseball as far as, you know, getting them on board. And then he said, he specifically said training as a team was huge for our culture and huge for our team building. And I think that's big. And anybody that's trained, anybody that's trained kids, realizes that but if you're training with a team it's just a little bit different atmosphere um so that's big um one thing that i've been doing more and more of that i need to it's part of again part of ego and part of letting go is i'll allow some of our kids to run our warm-ups um under my my thumb a little bit but i make sure that i put them in situations where they have to lead um now then the best thing that develops leaders is my this is probably the best thing i do one of the favorite things i do with our program is our summer so we just finished our freshman, our block with our, our summer block here. Our incoming freshmen, and I open it to eighth graders also. Um, we may have 150 kids at one session, but I have 20 to 25 juniors and seniors that actually volunteer their time. Um, I don't get paid, I don't get paid, I don't get anything uh, to come and help run those groups. And how I run it, we have a gym connected to the weight room. We will warm up together and we'll do some, some of that together. But then we'll split up into... Um, two different sessions. So in the gym, we'll have four different groups. In the weight room, we'll have four to five different groups. And the juniors and seniors are actually leading the groups, and they're teaching them how to hip hinge, teaching them how to do a bodyweight squat, teaching them how to do push-ups and taking them to the torso stuff. And in the gym, it's jumping and landing, and it's you know crawling and doing all sorts of things. Um, but it's really fun to see those kids uh, take that leadership role. And then I have adult coaches that are basically supervising and then I'm running around, Coach Kelly's running around, if kids are struggling teaching, yeah, we're going to hop in and we're going to teach them the finer points of the movements. But it really, it's really run by our, our kids. And the best thing this year, too, is I think we had about four or five different mornings where we had a spread for breakfast because the kids were like, hey, let's bring breakfast in. So all my juniors and seniors, you know, egg casseroles and breakfast pizzas. It was just fun because it kind of saw them bond a little bit as a group, too, so. Um, those are probably three main things that we do to develop leaders. Each one of those things is, it seems very, very important, you know, just in, in the building of the total culture. Um, and I, I think the, you, you talk about eighth and ninth graders getting to be able to learn from, from these juniors and seniors, man, they, they have to really look up to those people in general too, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that, that's, what's great is because I can look at these kids and say, Hey, you know, you know Riley Rucker, right? <laughs> yeah, all the kids know Riley Rucker because she, she's a great kid, and she's in there. She's coaching those kids. Um, she's not just taking them through basketball drills or soccer. Those are two, two sports she's pretty good at. No, she's in the weight room, and she's showing those kids this is important. Reese Summers, he's uh, one of our basketball players. He's I love having that kid in there. He's a he's a workhorse, and those kids know who he is. I could go down the list. I mean, we got cross-country kids. Um soccer players, football players, wrestlers, um, volleyball players. I mean, and softball and baseball, not as much but I, because they're in their season. But I've in the past had, I've had softball and baseball players. Hey, coach, I really want to do this too. So they have to work around their own training schedule, their practice schedule, their game schedule, and they still make time to come in. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat to see that happen. Man, I just try to remember back when I was in eighth grade and ninth grade, just – you know, idolizing those people that were pouring time into right. me. It's was like, that was awesome. And I, I think that's a great thing that you're doing there. Another thing that you were talking about is possibly having 150 kids in one session. And I, I know that your facilities can kind of lend to that a little bit, but uh, could you kind of give me some, like any resources or tools or systems you use to optimize your training or your workflow, or is it um, kind of give us an idea of how you manage that many, that many student athletes? So usually, if, if it's that big, it's it's our freshman group. I've had um, I've had over a hundred with our older kids too, um, and I don't know if it was a system other than just kind of figuring it out as you go. That's kind of everybody talks about the science and then the art of coaching. I think that's kind of the art too is making that workflow. Um, and with our with our freshmen, 
it really that whole system morphed because my first summer here I didn't I didn't have a clue what to expect. And you know, so I show up and the groups were already set and kids were signed up and they come in and all of a sudden my old weight room I mean we couldn't move in there because there were over a hundred kids uh of freshmen who had never been in the weight room. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And some of the seniors and actually I remember remember the kids, there were two or three senior volleyball players that saw me kind of uh Again, I had only been there for, you know, a week, two weeks. Saw me kind of swimming, and they said, hey, you need some help? I was like, please, that would be great. So then a couple of kids turned into, you know, two or three, turned into four or five, and then they just stuck around and helped that summer. Um, and that's really kind of how I ended up getting the workflow that I do um, with that summer group when we have so many kids. And now it's turned into something that, Every year, I always wonder. I'm like, man, am I going to get enough kids to help me? And every year, I have way more, uh, way more than I think they're going to. Um, so then you just kind of you kind of work. I said, hey, this is going to work. We can't have 150 kids trying to teach them the same thing at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. So that's when we got into these different stations. Um, so the most what we'll have is, you know, if we have 20 kids in a station, uh, or even 30, we end up splitting those into two. So like, if we're doing, if we have a group teaching them how to you know, do a body weight squat or we'll start with counterbalance and um, we'll have two to three kids at that station. Well, one group is teaching them that while the other one will we'll split that group up into two. So they're squatting. And what we did with the other one, we just did some, uh, like the band, like monster. We put bands around their ankles. We said, did some adduction, abduction, um, did some of the leg curls on the sore necks, you know, some of those easier things to teach. They got some work done. So that's kind of how your flow goes. And then, with the older kids, um, just, you know, if you ever get a chance to design a facility, you know, design it with your workflow in mind. Um, then I do a lot of stuff on, on stopwatches and whistles and I keep them together. And that's, sometimes it's great. Sometimes I let them go. And every class and every group is different. Um, because some groups I can say, hey, push play and we rock and roll and they go. Other groups I've blown the whistle for every set and every rep. Uh, it just kind of depends on the, uh, the climate of that group, if you will. How do you get the the juniors and seniors that are helping out with the the freshmen and the eighth graders? How how do you get them like trained up? You know, like before the session, however long it's going to be, like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, whatever it is. Are you having those people come in a little bit earlier to learn, or is it just because they've been around the program so long? You can tell them, hey, this is what I want. Let's get it done. It's mostly that, but like you have to be for those kids to be able to do that i always tell them they have to be fully invested into our program when, and they have to be a junior or senior i don't allow a sophomore because they haven't quite been through it enough um so we'll, i'll talk to each one beforehand we'll meet before um before the summer starts and we'll meet the first day we meet again a little bit earlier um, and i go over you know each kid or each group of kids will have one station that they hammer out that whole summer and we just talk about hey this is how i teach it do you remember doing this oh yeah and then you know, they, it's good for them because, you know, they say just like anything, you learn better by teaching anyway. Um, so the kids can get better at teaching it because I'm doing it because of their, their coaching. it. They've heard me say, you know, heard me teach that over and over and over. So really for them, it's just a matter of how do I communicate that to uh, these kids in a different way. Um, funny story, I was coaching at FCA camp this summer. And there was 95 degrees out, and we had a two and a half hour practice in the afternoon. Some of the other coaches, football coaches, were, hey, you know, why don't you take these 55 kids that you've never seen before and do a session in the weight room? I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, sure. So I'll do that. And I was terrified, to be honest. I said, that's my wheelhouse, but it's not my comfort zone. Um, when that. So what we ended up doing was set it up just like we did with freshmen. And I had. We had college kids that were huddle leaders, which are basically camp kind of counselors. And they set up, they ran my stations, and it was fun to hear them because I, I had to teach them how to teach things too. They were great. I watched them train those kids. I mean, these are you know, two seniors at Wisconsin Whitewater right now playing football. And I love Ryan. He's great. He does a great job up there. Um, these guys are like, man, I didn't realize teaching this was so hard. And I learned some of these, you know, more nuances of how to do it because I would show them and teach them the little finer things. And, and so it's just funny when you start to teach things, you realize like, oh man, I got to be more detailed to, to put this 
in a, in a, in a way that these kids can understand. Um, so I, I teach them individually as well, if that makes sense. And then like I alluded to earlier, like I'm bouncing around and if I see a, a kid struggling or a group struggling to teach, I hop in and I'll actually run that station. So they get to see me and hear me again. Um, so those kids can mimic what I'm teaching, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome stuff. Cause one of the things that I, I think about, you know, my dad's coach for like 25 years and it's multiple sports and he's the strength and conditioning coach. And one of the things that I think about is like, okay, all these student athletes, they're hearing this, this voice, the same voice year round doing all these different things, which is, it's awesome. Yeah. It's, but at the same time, you know, like at what point does your voice start to, to lose a little bit, unless you have other coaches and other people step up you know, that, that are bought in. And, and I think one of the cool things that you're doing with that is giving, empowering all these other students um, to be able to come in and coach. And, and now they're learning from, you know, 25 people plus you and coach Kelly. I mean, like that's, that's a huge deal. I mean, that, that gives you that, that little bit of refreshment that you need so that, that people, when you're, when you're talking, they're, they're there, they're, they're bought in, you know, and I think that goes a long, long way, especially when you have, student athletes, you know, for five years, you know, and you have him year round. That's, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You're hundred percent right. I, I say to my kids all the time, don't let me become noise in the background, you know, because you hear my voice so much. It sounds like just, you know, noise in the background at times. <laughs> so I said, don't let that happen. So I, you're right. It's, it's good to get other perspectives and other people because to hear you so often. Um, it's just, you know, it's just like a matter of cleaning up a group at the end of the day. You know, when I start barking out orders, you know, it's just true. Some kids are great. Some kids, just, like, I'm not even talking, like, mm -hmm. because they hear me so much, you know. So uh, it's just, you're, you're right. It's good to have other perspectives and other, other voices in their head. What is the toughest hurdle that you currently have? You know, you, is, you know, to an outsider's perspective, you've got a lot of things rolling in the right direction, but we all have these struggles that, that are going on. What's, what's the toughest hurdle that you have? Um, wow, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I think the toughest hurdle is just, is I, I will never be satisfied until we have from a, from a student standpoint, if you're just, a, if you're a student in our school, you're not an athlete. If you want to take our classes, awesome. If you want to take DE classes, that's fine too. Like it doesn't bother me. But from an athlete standpoint, um, I just never, I can't, and I, if there's a high school, that is this way, let me know. But I don't, we have never had 100% every sport, every student athlete, every coach um, on board and training year round without, you know, missing minimal time. Other, other you know what I mean? Every, mm -hmm. You're going to miss time here and there for, you know, sickness or being out of town or whatever. But we've never had that 100%. And for me, I will never be satisfied until that happens, which means I'm probably never going to be satisfied until I retire because, it's probably not going to happen. You know what I mean? And, but it's just like, you know, why would you stop trying to make that happen? You know, my job is to try to get everybody on board. And then, you know, and it, it, it's, I've had some conversations with Michael, some people at uh, BBA up there in Dubuque. And it's, it's a reality. And I know some great, you know, personal or private training facilities and people that, that I talk to and I learn from. Um, but I guarantee you any other high school coach that if your kids go to one, it's, a uh, it frustrates you, um, because you're like, well, what the heck are we doing wrong? And why, why aren't you training with us? And, um, some people do it supplementally and the more coaches I talk to, you know, it, on both ends is it, it, you just have to put that ego aside and do what's best for the kids. And sometimes your kids are going to go, um, whether it's that they want to or parents or they want to do more. Um, I think the biggest thing is learning to work together with those people. That's where both people have to put egos aside uh, because if you don't, then ultimately the only person that gets hurt is a kid. And it might hurt my ego, but my ego is not near as important as the kid's success. Um, so that's one thing talking to Michael is, you know, and he, he said, you know, you know, if I'm working with, if he was working with me, you know, at North Scott, and he's at, you know, in his performance center in Dubuque. If we had kids, if we shared some kids, he's like, I would look to supplement and do things that you're not able to do because of the large numbers you have, because of the 
multiple sports you have there at the same time. And but if we work together, then we can we can make that a good program. If that makes sense. Um, so I think the biggest hurdle there is one getting everybody on board, um, doing what we do, and then two, you know, working with the private and public working together, or I shouldn't say par- public, but the private sector and the school sector working together with each other and not necessarily fighting because it's all about the kids and not us. I think you make an awesome point there, man. I, one of the things that I continually see when that conversation comes up is, you know, if, if you've got good coaches on both ends, man, it's, it's, why wouldn't you utilize that a little bit? You know, where you, you know, you're talking to Michael who he, he knows his stuff. It's like, okay, you know, this is what I'm doing. Um, I know that I'm limited because I got, you know, 18 teams, maybe these are some of the places and you guys have that conversation where that student athlete can continue to excel. Um, I, it's one of those things though, you know, it's, there's always good coaches, um, at both, at both, um, places. And there's always coaches that, that still need to learn or improve. And so just making sure that, uh, you set those egos aside and, and, uh, do what's right for the kids is, is gotta be our, our lens that we're looking through. Um, so I, Mm -hmm. I think you've, I think you killed that, man. That's a, that's a great conversation to have with, with people. So, you know, one of the things that I'm going to continue to uh, ask you about, cause I'm trying to learn and implement everything with my younger kids all the way through my seniors um, is just what, what does your training philosophy look like? And I kind of want to know personally, you know, what, what are some of the things that I can take and, and uh, kind of modify my training philosophy. And uh, along with that, what are programming methodologies that you've had success with? Okay, so I, I guess my philosophy is, you know, everybody can tell you, you know, you know, no injuries in the weight room and whatnot. Um, but my philosophy, I would say, runs deeper than that. Um, I did, I did a 3D coaching and I did a transformational purpose statement. Um, and basically, my philosophy is coaching is whatever I do, um, I'm hoping to transform lives, whether it's coaches or student athletes, and make them be the best self that they can be. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean one, like I said, one lens that like, I want them to be the best football player they can be. I want them to be the best. And, and we all say that every coach I know says that I want you to be a great teammate, a great person, a great friend, and eventually, you know, a great husband, a great wife, whatnot. But again, I've been, this is my 10th year at North Scott and I've been, I've been at Illinois State for two and Winter State for two. So 14 years on the coaching end, I've yet to hear a coach say anything different. But to actually see them put it in practice the right way, in my opinion, is rare. Um, you can say what you want, but how? what are you doing to develop kids and to follow through um, making them, you know, into those into the, the best persons they can be? Uh, so that's my philosophy. Now, as far as, uh, so that has nothing to do with sets and reps and, and all that has everything to do with, you know, with how you treat people, attitude, effort. Um, again, we talked about big time, like, oh, you're just a, you're just in high school, so we're not going to do this. They're just in high school. No, that's crap. That's not. They can do it. They can do it the right way, and I'm going to hold them accountable to it. Um, so as far as the training philosophy, you know, it's, it's morphed. I know everybody, I guess probably the last couple of years, two to three years, you know, if you – if you ask around, hey, I want to know about this one by 20 philosophy for high school, um, I get a lot of questions about that and because I've had a lot of opportunities to, to talk on it. Um, I am by no means an expert in it, um, but it's something that, that when I first started here, you know, I shoot, everybody's got, you've got West Side Cons, you get got tier systems, you got all these different systems. Um, a friend of mine that works at the University of Iowa, and, she was telling me that she goes to the conference hall, oh, you're, you're a Landon guy. That's Landon Evans. I mean, he, he's uh, been a huge influence on me and just from a learning standpoint. Um, I don't want to be pigeonholed into a, I do this system or this system or that system because I think you limit yourself. Um, there's no one perfect way to do things, and <clears throat> every kid's going to respond differently to different um, to different stimulus and all that. Um, so what I what I sought out to do is okay. If you get into high school, you hear it and you read it all the time. We should, high school should not be doing what local university is doing with their, you know, twenty to twenty two year old kids. You're working with fifteen to eighteen or fourteen to eighteen year old kids. 
shouldn't be the same thing. But the more I looked, the more I found that, well, that's exactly what everybody's doing. And in here, and this is not a slight at all because they do a great job. Um, in Iowa, you know, where does everybody go to get their training philosophies if you're training football players? Chris Doyle. Well, hey, we're, we, I've heard so many people say, oh, we do it by Iowa. We do it by Iowa. My first thought was, for one, why? You shouldn't be. And two, no, you don't because <laughs> you're not him. Um, so I wanted to find out what is the best for for high school kids. Everything you read is all about high performance or you know, high-level athletes, and really got exposed to this one by 20 stuff when I went to Virginia for the, the seminar. Um, just through conversations, I, I bought a book. Um, the book was good, but um, has some missing pieces in it, and then you just start talking to other people. And um, So th- the idea behind the whole thing is not just a set of 20. That's part of it. That's just something they were, that Dr. Yes has used to put on the name of a book. Um, so... The whole premise is the questions you're asking. Instead of saying, how much can I do to get the best out of my kids, it's the other way. You say, what is the, how little can I do to get the best out of my kids or get the best results? So it's a minimalist philosophy, meaning I don't want, why would I want to do more and more and more that could possibly have a negative effect on training or on performance when I can do less? Matt Tomey heard him say one time in a podcast, he said, how do I know, everybody knows how much too much is. He said, but how do I know how much too little is if I've never done it? Um, I said, wow, that's, a, that's a great. So the more I've done this uh, to get kids to come back, I don't want to crush them all the time. I want them to feel good, and I want them to feel like they can perform well. Um, but if you do KPIs, all you got to do is, you know, do your KPIs and then, do your minimal training, and if you're making progress and you have big, big jumps in your KPIs, why would you need to do more? Um, you know, I'm kind of going long on this, but our kids do. I look at our sophomores; they're probably pulled the most directions because they can. T- they're the that sophomore junior year, at least here at North Scott, is where kids decide: Am I going to hang out on to do three to four sports, or am I going to shut it down and do one to two? Because they do so much. So when I come to the weight room, you know, my goal is to give them as little as possible to keep them healthy and strong and, you know, moving those KPIs in the right direction without overdoing it. So that's kind of the one by 20 system is more of a minimalist system. Um, and again, if you want more information, you can call and talk to me anytime, but it's way more than one set of 20 reps. That's just a small piece of the pie. Cool. If coaches want to know more, you, you threw out that they can call, um, and uh, you, you talked about the book. Are there any other resources that you'd just be like, okay, this, these are some quick articles to read before you call so you have a basic understanding? Or, or what's, a, what's the best way to start to learn about the 1 by 20 system? Um, yeah, really conversation. I mean, if you want to learn first, get, get um, Dr. Yes's books. And, and a lot of them are, have some overlap. Um, but they're also like if you want to learn about cutting some of his all of his, the cutting techniques and whatnot that he talks about. And he was a biomechanic, biomechanist, so biomechanics are huge. He's got a book. It's women's soccer, like training for women's soccer. Well, it's way more than that. I mean, it's all about cutting techniques and how to train that, and it's great stuff. So, I mean, sometimes again, sometimes his, the titles are just titles. Uh, so read his books. Read the one by twenty. Read the uh, you know. Oh, what's wrong with American sports and how to fix it. And um, those are the, the things there. But I, I learned way more from talking to people than I have uh, by reading. I mean, you can get a basic idea, but then to really get in depth on how the system works and the biomechanics and everything, you got to talk to people. Um, and not just me. Like, I'm, I would be a starting point because I'm still talking to other people, if you will, too, mm-hmm. to, to learn. Um, so that'd be the best thing there. And, the other thing I caution is, is just like with anything, you know, check your sources, make sure you know, because I have read articles, people that dabble in it or say, hey, I'm going to do a six week block and compare it to this. And okay, six weeks of it, it's, that's not enough. Like that's, again, that's just part of a small sample of what the whole thing is. So you can't just read an article that says, yeah, we did this for six weeks and I hated it because I saw this and not that. Like, well, you actually didn't do everything either. Like, so that can actually do your disservice if you if you read the wrong things. Um, so consider your sources and 
make phone calls. And then I, I was, I would say, and I say this to presentations is don't, if you're going to do it, don't just do it for a short amount of time. Even if you're going to do like a control group, like do it for, for a year, do it for a year and a half. And then, and before you give yourself a chance to uh, make a judgment on it, because if you do it for just a short amount of time, it, you're definitely, you will not get the results of what you think you do. It's just, cause it takes kids a while to figure it out. It takes you a while to figure it out. Um, so you, you have to, you have to try it. You can't just dabble in it. You know what I mean? Um, if you just dabble, then you're not going to see what it actually does. So. Coach, it sounds like you're learning all the time, and, and obviously you're learning about the one by 20, but other things too. What are you excited about learning and improving on this next year? Um, I really enjoy you know, learning about um, monitoring and how to do that at the high school level. You know, one thing um, coming out of the last two conferences I've been to, I want to do a better job of just questionnaires. Um, talk to, and we, we work in high schools, okay, so a lot of us do. Um, talking to a coach in Indiana, or he was talking to us in Indiana, and um, they do just a five question questionnaire, um, and then they check it before every class, and they just all they do is look at the colors based on the spread out on Team Builder. And um, through the colors, you know, I had, saw this pattern with a couple of kids. And this last year, they found two kids that were actually suicidal just from the questionnaire that was filled out and the conversations that ensued afterwards. And to me, I was like, wow, that's huge because every kid that comes in our door has something. Some kids, you know, everything seems perfect in their life, um, but everybody has something they're going through, whether it's academic, whether it's at home, whether it's social. And you can see these snippets of things in these, in these questionnaires, which will lead you to conversations that Coach Kelly said the other day, if we do a good job of making sure we talk to kids, he said, but this will give us a, an idea of who we need to make sure that we seek out that day. And I said, yeah, I, I 100% agree. So if you see some some things that are patterns in these questionnaires, like, you know, fatigue or, you know, my mood is poor and it's back-to-back days and it just happens to be, you know, you see some consistency. Well, now I can make sure I go talk to that kid and have a conversation and then who knows what's going to come of it. Um, so I think that's one thing that I really want to get better at is just monitoring, not just for a performance standpoint, but from a, you know, from a, a life standpoint. I remember sitting there and listening to him too, and and yeah, you, you know, were, I, you were there. Sorry. Yeah, no, I I I remember just looking at you and being like, holy crap, you know, like two people that right. that you know, depending on how everything played out, they might have saved. So. Um, that, that ends up being a big deal. You know, it's not, that goes beyond just strength and conditioning there. And, and, you know, I, I do monitoring on the back of our, our cards, you know, but I, I look at this stuff once a week, you know, it's not like I can do a quick daily thing. So when he talked about how they do it to be efficient and, you know, they were rolling through, well, he was probably rolling about the same amount of athletes that you do, but both, both you guys are just a little bit more than me, but just to be efficient, to be able to check in on everybody every day. You know, even if it's partway through the session where you can run over and check it real quick just so those conversations yeah. can happen. I, that's that's a huge deal. I'm, I'm happy you brought that up. I I think that is something that uh, needs to be heard and, and um, people can start looking into a little bit more. Uh, the uh, the thing that you mentioned for it would be team builder. Um, have you found or have you been playing around, figure out like a good way to look at all that stuff? Well, that's what. I've got a questionnaire that I use and I actually um, got a lot of it from my friend, uh, I'm a shout out. He's at um, the University of Iowa, Zach Walrod. He was a funny, he was an intern at Illinois State when I was there. And then he was, <laughs> I'm going to tell, I was telling this too. He was, he didn't know what the heck he was going to do with his life. And I said, you need to come be a GA. And, um, my boss ended up hiring him. So now he's at the um, University of Iowa, does a great job. And, I, we just talked about some of his questionnaires and they have a ton of resources there. I mean, they've got Omega Wave, they got TMG, they got, I mean, you, you name it. And he says, one of the best things I do is just a questionnaire. And he said, all it is is a snapshot and it just gives you some immediate feedback. And he goes, you don't have to get crazy with it. You can just see right away, you know, those little things. And so I talking to him, so we get it all set up. It's only five questions, five or six. Um, so now, I know Team Builder now has color-coded things. So, like, if you are, 
know, everything is good, middle, and bad. So it's like red, green, or red, yellow, and green. So if you, if I get a printout or if I open up, I can use my laptop, I can use, you know, an iPad. Um, I can pull up my class. So if you have your group uh, or your class grouped into uh, their own little section on Team Builder, I can pull up um, the questionnaire and I can see the whole, the whole squad or the whole class and I can look at what's red, what's red, yellow, what's green. And then I can give a little bit of a, um, I'd be more intentional of who I talk to and have um, intentional conversations with kids. So have I, how do I do that yet? I don't know. Cause I just started getting into that coming into this fall and team builder changed. I think it's been last maybe you know, three, four months where they added the colors, which mm-hmm. is huge because that you have to look at all the numbers. Right. No, I, I like that. And that's, that's something that you had, you had mentioned before. I think I'm going to have to check back in with you to see how it's going. Um, I'm, I'm trying, I've been working on trying to do one with, um, with Google doing a Google doc or a Google sp- uh, spreadsheet. And I think through team builder is probably going to end up being the best option. So thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Another question here for you. And it's along the same lines is what are some of your favorite professional development resources? And I know you've hit some resources. I know you've, you've talked about a couple people that people could reach out to. Um, but what are, what are some of the resources that you just like on a consistent basis are are checking or looking in at? Um, well, I try to read a lot. Um, and anytime I'm at, at a conference and people, hey, you know, this book and that book. And, you know, so I try to grab, grab different books um, because you can always find what you want to find. It's that um, you can confirm your bias, if you will, by finding things that, hey, well, I know this, this is going to be along the same lines of what I, because I think so I'm going to learn about this. For me, it's, you know, I want to learn about other things, too, <clears throat> for one or two things. One, I may find something that I like and I want to use, or two, it may confirm why I do what I do. Um, so I, from a specific standpoint, you know, I guess I used to be huge, you know, starting in the field just like anybody else. You're on Teen Nation and Elite Fitness all the time, you know, and there's great resources there. Um, but since I've kind of expanded my scope and instead of reading, you know, short blogs and, and articles, I try to read more books and um, and not just training books. You know, I would say there's three books that I read. Uh, I'll read um, training books. I like to read books on politics. And I like to read, read books about religion, um, specifically, you know, Christianity and um, stuff like, you know, so I, like, I hate to say religion, but um, those are kind of three books is where I like to read because you can get, and then I've expanded a little bit more too into business too. There's always good stuff from business, but um, you know, the good to greats and stuff like that. So I try to read as much as I can and don't get me wrong too. I'm not somebody that I don't get to read for hours of time of the day. I'm going to get a page or two here and there. Um, so I'm not like, you know, I'm not bringing up 25 books in a year. I wish it would. Sometimes I see these people on social media and they're like, Oh, I'm on book 31 this year. I'm like, what the heck else do you do in your life? Like, do you coach? <laughs> do you have kids? <laughs> I don't, I can't do it. I don't have that much time. So, um, so trying to read and then, um, it just people, you know, I, I can't emphasize it enough because you, you can read all you want. You can, you, you can get all the best philosophy and whatnot, but you will never learn as much from books as you will from people. So find people and then don't be afraid to reach out, uh, reach out to people. And if they don't call you back, then they don't call you back. Reach out to the next one. So that'd be my biggest advice. Those are good. Thank you for, for making, shaming me a little bit and need to read a little bit more, I think is, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Yeah, if you're not, if you're not reading, you know, you're all behind. <laughs> not, not, sorry, not you specifically. In, in yeah, general. no, I, I'll take that personally. I, I get what you're saying, Coach. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, so we're we're coming up to the end here, and and we we do this finisher at the end. It's five quick questions, and you basically just say what comes to your head first. Uh, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Awesome. All right. The person that has influenced you the most. In life, probably my dad. Um, huge influence on me. Uh, he could for a long time, just a lot like your dad. Um, I like to get a lot of the things that I do from my dad. What is your favorite quote? The thing I use a lot is how you do anything is how you do everything. Um, I use that with our kids, and I started here. Our other coaches use it too. 
because it's so true. You can't turn it on and off. You know, how you do anything in your life is how you're going to do everything. And really think about that. If you cut corners in certain areas of your life, you're going to see corners being cut in other places too. Um, so how you do anything is how you do everything. Hobby outside of training. Um, outside of training? Um, right now, I was coaching my kids and enjoying the time with my kids. I spent uh, I spent all day yesterday. The first, probably the first day all summer, I was just home with my kids. and I threw footballs. I threw baseballs. I went to the swimming pool. Um, we had a fire outside, did s'mores. I mean, just my hobbies are going to be building into my children's lives. Your favorite workout playlist? Anything Shine Down or Breaking Benjamin. Um, and you can ask any of my for- former student athletes, uh, they will agree because there's a time when Shine Down's new albums come out, it's pretty much on repeat for about two months before we change it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, small school coach who is killing it and deserves a shout out. Um, I would probably, uh, a guy that I you know, talk to and I think we bounce, bounce off each other a little bit is Ryan Arnold over at Pleasant Valley. Um, it's kind of funny. He's a North Scott grad. Um, and I think, you know, we got a little rivalry between schools, but, um, we also respect each other enough professionally that we can, we can talk and have conversations. And, um, he's, he's a guy that, uh, I have a lot of respect for as far as, uh, North and high school kids and what they're doing over there. They've had a lot of success over the years too. So, um, Ryan Arnold, the PV's guy that, uh, you know, he just there's a shout out. Good dude. That's awesome. Thanks for coming on the show, coach. I want to just let the listeners know, man, if you want to reach out to a quality coach um, that's making the big time where they're at, uh, reach out to Tony Stewart at North Scott. He is doing just that. And um, just somebody that pours into everybody that he meets, uh, builds relationships. Um, you, you heard, you know, the people that have influenced him, kind of his favorite quote is kind of his mantra for life and and uh, just being able to connect with a bunch of people and and I think that's that's what it's all about, uh, and I appreciate him coming on. Thank you, Coach, so much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it.